Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to another Dansky Live. My name is, of course, Dansky. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Ah, oh, it's so nice to see the regulars in the chat. Hello, everyone. Who have we got? Who have we got? We've got the Archaic Way, Alok. Hello, Graphic Up, Shadow Walker, Ahmed, Chiliche. Hopefully, I've pronounced that correctly. Mr. Mike Phelps. Hello, sir. Pro fictionalistic. That is a pretty cool name. I like that. Video maker, aka Roger. Hello. Sema. Ah, oh, fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you jumping in every stream. It really does mean a lot to me. Mitsubitsa. Yo, yo, yo. Happy to be back. The Thesis, also known as Tomei. Welcome. Ah, oh, amazing. Quinton Hoffman, I recently stumbled onto your channel and streams down. I'm really impressed with what you're doing here. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love doing these streams. Hopefully you guys enjoy them as well. And uh, yeah, it's a fun time. We just get to hang out and uh, design stuff. And that's kind of what I'm going to be doing today, actually, because yeah, I've got a lot of ideas for um, upcoming videos and I just kind of want to brainstorm a little bit and I think in doing that there's there's quite a lot of fun to be had and if you guys have got any ideas you can just you know throw it out there I'll demo some techniques I'll, I'll, ba I'll basically be like an Adobe Illustrator jukebox you can just literally you don't even have to put in like a 10p or a quarter or whatever it is and I'll just I'm, I'm just basically gonna be a, a designer acting as a performing monkey today. So if you've got anything you'd like to see demonstrated, techniques, tools, whatever it is, you know, just let me know in the chat and I will try to be as helpful as possible. <laughs> Definitely need to mock up me as a monkey. <laughs> oh. oh, amazing. I'm glad the videos are really helpful. Thank you. Yo, Reese, welcome back. Adding shadows easily to shapes, etc. Is that Photoshop or Illustrator? Can you create a dragon breathing fire and a knight fighting it? God, Jesus, throw me in at the deep end. <laughs> yeah, sure. How long have you got? We've got another, like, got 12 hours? I'll just sit here and do that. <laughs> it might take a little while. Oh, Illustrator, inside the shapes, shadows. Yeah, that's an interesting one. There's quite a few different ways to do that, actually. Um, yeah, you can use the gradient tool for shadows. It depends on what you're trying to create. What, give me some, give me a bit more context. What would you um, be looking to add shadows to? Because you can use the gradient tool. You can use the mesh tool if you're feeling brave. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough one, that is. Um, you can use the blend tool to create shadows. There's quite a few different ways to create them, but it really depends how you're going to be using them. Oh. I feel like there was something I was going to say, but I've just totally forgotten what it was, <laughs> if there was anything at all. Oh, right, I'm just going to start off by creating a bunch of different arrows, vector arrows, because uh, this is well this is fun it's a nice little exercise and in uh, creativity how many different arrow shapes can you create and there's lots of different ways to create them and different tools so I'm just gonna start there and uh, we'll uh, we'll see we'll see where we end up <laughs> turning minecraft icons into a new vector style well that would be interesting create a logo for someone in the comments ha <laughs> we did that last week we did that last week that was good fun though that was good fun. I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe we'll do one logo later on, just for just for fun. Right, arrows. So easiest way is to go with the rectangle tool. I always start with a square, and we're just going to do these in black. Sorry, I'm. <laughs> there's like a, a <laughs> there's a long grey-haired wig under the desk and my foot keeps touching it and it <laughs> keeps tickling my toes. <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll put it on later if you're lucky. <laughs> or unlucky, depending on how you look at it. Anyway, right, polygon tool. So we need a triangle. We're just going to left-click, three sides, boom, we have a triangle. And this is probably the easiest way to create an arrow. So we're just going to do that. Uh, I'm not a fan of this style of arrow personally. I like to use the direct selection tool and squish that top down a bit. So we get something a bit more stumpy. 
And of course, we could select this here and we can scale this out. Now, if you scale from one side, it will adjust it from one side. Hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard and it's going to go from both sides. So as you can see, you can uh, you can chunk this up or you can streamline it and have it super thin, depending on the kind of arrow that you're going for. And this is just one way to do it. You know, you could actually create this as a path with the pen tool. We're just going to throw down a straight line and then thicken up that stroke weight. And actually, it's probably easier to have it as a path with a stroke because then you've got the stroke property. So, you know, you could round that cap up if you wanted cap off if you wanted to. Uh, you could you could make a dashed arrow. I don't know why you'd want to do that. You've also got the width profiles down here, so you can actually taper that arrow off very quickly and easily. And you can even use the width tool, which is definitely over here somewhere. Where have I put it, though? That is a good question. This is what happens when you... There you go. It's right in front of me. You rearrange your toolbar and you lose everything. Great job, Dan. So this is cool, actually, because you can, you know, do things like that. That's kind of cool, actually. Let's... So I'm just going to make a whole bunch of variations and kind of just see which ones I like. We're going to keep it straight at first. Let's have a... Yeah, we could bring that in. We could actually... Let's try and round that off. There we go. Let's round it off. <laughs> Whoa, not that. And this is kind of cool, actually, because you can bring an arrow into a, like a really sharp point. But if you want something a bit more playful, you want to keep those corners rounded, you can just set the cap to round and adjust the width. And this is one of the advantages of having this as a path rather than a shape with a solid fill. Graphic Up says, I am eating beans. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> You're nice. Thank you. <laughs> That's very kind. I was given an assignment and I saw your video and it helped me a lot. Oh, fantastic. Which video was it? Adding realistic shadows. Yeah, you can add shadows in Illustrator. We'll, we'll do some of that in a bit. You can add shadows. Uh, if you want more realism, I would definitely go and do it in Photoshop though. Because Photoshop is... Illustrator is vector-based software. So, you know, all these shapes are created out of uh, geometry and nodes that are all mathematically produced and therefore they can be scaled to any size and you're not going to lose any quality. Photoshop is raster based. Um, you could think of that as, I guess, pixel based, like a photograph. You know, you can't scale that to any size because uh, if you scale it too big, it will pixelate and it will look awful. Um, but with Photoshop, you get brushes and you creating shadows and things, you know, obviously Photoshop is more for photos and you just you're always going to get much more realism in Photoshop but with Illustrator you can get pretty close so it depends like kind of which software you prefer using also by the way um, YouTube's giving me this weird error telling me that the stream quality is poor so <laughs> just uh, let me know if the stream is weird glitchy laggy delayed anything like that because um, it's telling me there's something wrong, but, you know, it did this last time and you guys said everything was fine, so, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to op operate on the assumption everything is good. Ahmed Dansky, love your tutorial. Amazing, thank you. Thank you so much. Round all corners, what will happen? That is a very good question. I mean, with arrows, I would personally be just a little bit cautious rounding the corners, because, you know, I mean, I don't know, each to their own, but rounding off the corners on the head of an arrow, I just, I think it looks a bit rubbish personally. But if you do it subtly, like this, just a little bit, um, I think you get away with it. So we'll do one version here. I'm going to round this off a little bit. And of course, remember, you can round off just one corner. That's, that's not an arrow. That's, that's all full. we will do that. Maybe these sides. Let's try and... Nope. That's like a more of a paintbrush. 
So yeah, you can, I think you can get away with rounding off arrows quite subtly. Uh, these are all straight lines at the minute, so we will add some curves in. In fact, the best way to do that, well, we could use the pen tool. We could just draw a curve like that. But actually, I'm going to start with geometric perfection using the arc tool. Click and drag. Now, obviously, this is terrible. Please just, just never do this. Hold down shift and it will snap and you'll get this perfect quarter segment. And while you're holding this down, you can press F as well and it will flip that around the other way. If you didn't know that one, that is a, a nifty little trick. So we've got a quarter segment and if I use the eyedropper tool, I can sample this here. It doesn't copy over the width properties. If I double click on the eyedropper tool, I think you can choose what it does and doesn't sample. So uh, eyedropper picks up. Huh. Let's try this, we'll check that. Let's see if it, no, it, it doesn't want to copy that one over. So um, that's a shame. Although, the join, the mitre, okay, so it will copy quite a lot of stuff, but it doesn't look like you can just copy the width profile, which is fine. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> Mike says Google using error prompts as a way for you to upgrade to their two gig fiber. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a really weird one. It's a, it, the error is about the resolution. The internet speed here we've got is insane. Like I'm I'm hooked up to the LAN with a LAN cable and the internet speed's insane. There's just some weird thing, I think. <laughs> it's a test. Hello Dansky, I'm so delighted to be here. What did I miss? Says Wilson. Uh, not very much, we've just started. We're making a bunch of arrows to start with and then uh, I'm taking uh, requests, I guess you could say, like a like a jukebox. Just throw some requests out. We might be doing some shadows in a bit as well. That seems to be something people would like to uh, cover. Right, so we've got a curved arrow there. That's cool. Let's rotate that around. Have it pointing. Oh, we'll start with. We'll start with up. So that's kind of cool. And let's try this again. We'll select a different width profile. Now that's obviously the wrong way, uh, but you can click this icon here and it will flip that around. So it depends what you'd prefer. You know, you've got that really kind of sharp tapered off point there. Personally, I think I would go with this one. I like a little bit of roundedness, but I'd probably bring that down a pinch. Now the good thing about using the width tool is because I've adjust this, adjusted this one end here and made it quite thin, this end is still quite chunky. If I actually adjust the stroke weight, you can see that width profile down here, it will actually still respect the changes that I've made. So it will maintain those same proportions, keeping that end that I've made a lot smaller. It will keep that kind of tapering going. So that is kind of cool. So as long as you get the right proportion between this end of your path and this end, you can scale it up and down and it maintains those proportions, which is handy. Quinton says, vectors use mathematics to define the position of points and how they are connected in a defined space, while raster images are built by a grid of squares, pixels, that each have a color. That is a very good definition. That is textbook. <laughs> Shadow Walker, would you recommend using AI to create logos or would you design it yourself? Um, when you say AI, do you mean artificial intelli eh, intelligence or Adobe Illustrator? If it was of artificial, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, just no. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend relying on AI to, to do the creative work. It depends what you do. If you want a career as a creative professional, uh, my advice would be to learn the tools and... Uh, you know, develop your own skills personally. That's my uh, my two cents on it. I think at the moment everything is just AI this, AI that, and I just, I personally feel quite exhausted with all of it. <laughs> it just makes me want to, I think I said on Twitter yesterday, it makes me want to uh, just connect with people more and go outdoors. <laughs> just AI and screens all the time everywhere is just a little bit too much for me.
Yo, what's up? Rayouf in the chat, welcome. Ah, right. Okay, let's duplicate this one here. Now another tool that we can use that's quite handy is the scissor tool and you will locate this under the eraser tool. This is great for making cuts along a path. So you can see this, of course. Again, another advantage to doing this as a path is I can make a cut and you can see it does that and it goes all weird. It's applying that stroke width profile to both shapes because what I've actually done is as you can see, I've cut this into two pieces now. So all I need to do is just select that bottom piece and just delete it. And then I've got kind of like a, a slightly shorter arrow. Yeah, that's kind of cool. We could actually do some freehand ones as well, which would be interesting. Let's grab the brush tool. And we'll use the left and right square brackets to scale that up. And if I double click on this tool, I can actually drag this all the way to the right. And so actually, if I wanted to create something like this, actually, no, I'm not going to use that head. I'm going to do this all myself. There we go. One. Oh, it's reset my brush settings. Well, that's just great. What was that? Oh, there we go. Right. And this is a, a great way. I'm like I'm using a mouse. There's no there's no tablet or stylus or anything here. And it's just a great way to get smoother paths as well. And it makes drawing freehand just so much easier. Yeah, we could connect this up like that. Or well, we've got a detached version, not really sure. We'll kind of pencil those, pencil those, or we'll pin those over there. The things I love to learn are those in tool shortcuts, like the pen flip tool. Oh, like the pen tool flip with the F that you did a few minutes ago. It would be great to see if a vid of your most handy tricks. Uh, that's funny you should say that, Mike, because there is actually one I'm working on. It's like a, a bunch of, um, I guess you could say they're tricks, hacks, whatever you call them uh, in Illustrator. And they're things that I think a lot of people um, wouldn't know. There's some that I certainly didn't know until recently. and. Uh, I, I think it will be a good one as well. I'm looking forward to that. Gorkum says, I can't understand the difference between the curvature tool and the pen tool. So the pen tool is, you know, you can dot, dot. I'm just drawing straight lines here. And I've drawn a, a straight line shape. Let's thicken that up a bit. Now with the pen tool, you can also draw curves and you can drag them out. Like this. I'm not entirely sure what this is. <laughs> it's a stake, a shape of a stake or something. The curvature tool is um, it makes it a lot easier to draw smooth curves. So if you just dot 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 this, you don't get a straight line. You actually, you can see it. It kind of really does assist you in drawing those nice smooth curves. So it does make it a heck of a lot easier usually <laughs> to draw you can see there if I uh, if I hover over that that point to complete the shape it kind of changes the rest of the shape to make it smooth so it does make it a lot easier to kind of you know draw much better curves whereas up here some of those are kind of a bit uh, a bit sharp I guess you could say those angles I agree with Mike Phelps. I'd love any of those quick tips to make life easier. <laughs> Himanshu, when your most create when is your most creative day or night? Ha! That's a really good question. I have always been someone that stays up late, and that is when my brain comes alive and I start creating, and then I end up staying up stupidly late, and then I'm tired in the morning. I got to be honest, guys. I've started getting up at between six and seven, probably for the last week. 
and I feel like a different person. I feel completely different. I wake up, I feel refreshed, I get a coffee, I go and sit in a field and I do nothing for 20 minutes except just sit out in nature, grass between my toes and my life is changing in ways that I actually could not have predicted. I feel so much happier. And getting up that early as well, I'm like, you know, I'm doing that I'm doing maybe some exercise in the morning, whatever training, and then I'm starting work at half seven, eight o'clock, and my brain is firing. I've got ideas coming out all over the place. Um, I've got more ideas at the moment for whether it's kind of like for my, my business or for design or for YouTube, whatever. I've got more ideas than I know what to do with. I haven't got the time to do everything I want to do right now. And that's all come about just from getting up earlier. So. In answer to your question, yeah, I used to be a bit of a night owl. I'd stay up and I'd be creating in the evening. And now I just, I'm really loving getting that kind of stuff done in the morning. And, you know, taking advantage of those those earlier hours in the day to do the creating side of things and then just mellow out a bit in the afternoon, you know? Things that I do the long route and bang my head against the wall. Looking forward to that, says Mike. Yeah, tell me about it, man. There's there's things I've done my entire career, pretty much. And I'm still learning new stuff about Illustrator now. And Photoshop and design and everything else. You know, you, do, you get set in your ways. I think that is the biggest downside. You get set in your ways and you pick up these habits. And then you realize years later, it's like, oh, wow. I could have made my life so much easier. I'm over here working on an Oktoberfest logo. Send help. <laughs> Video maker or Roger says, I like the pen tool. Yeah, the pen tool is great. Um, unless you find it hard to use and then it's like the most awful thing ever. But it's it, once you understand the fundamentals, it does get a heck of a lot easier. Hello Dansky, are you got overwhelmed if we as your watcher give you so many re questions requests? Giel says, oh no, that's fine. I'll try and keep one eye on the chat and one eye on the stream. Um, I'm getting a lot better at it, but uh, we're keeping today's session pretty, pretty chill. And uh, I'm just kind of making it up as I go along really. Got a few ideas I'm sort of playing around with, i.e. arrows. But um, yeah, feel free to shoot me any questions. I'll try and be as helpful as I can. When designing identities and logos, how do you build logos that work at really small sizes to use in apps or favicons? That's a good question. Um, I think it's one of those things that when you're designing for a client, you've got to consider where their logo is going to be used or where it might be used in the future. So yeah, that's what was the question? How do you build logos that work at really small sizes? I mean, I think I think the how is the same as I would build any other logo, but I'm always kind of checking against those requirements. Like it's gonna be used here, here, and here. It's gotta be suitable for the web. So I'm always kind of benchmarking it against that criteria. You know, if I come up with a logo design that doesn't tick that box, it's, it's not getting sent off. Do you know what I mean? So I think the thing in terms of the logo is, uh, you know, sometimes you kind of, you might design a logo, boom, there's your logo, and you'll have your text. In fact, we did some logo stuff the other day in the design review. So there we go, we've got the logo and the text. And you might kind of have it positioned like this, it's going to be on a brochure, for example, but on a website, you've got to consider, well, okay, actually, the logo is going to let me just expand that. The logo is going to end up smaller and then maybe the text would sit alongside it. That's quite common as well, you know? And then you've got to think, okay, well, Favicon, that's going to be, that's going to be really small. We're talking 32 pixels squared kind of small. So the mark that I produce, is it going to be recognizable at that size? I mean, it's, it's arguably, <laughs> it's arguably less important as a Favicon. But for the website, for sure, you know, it's no good having a crazy detailed logo that just becomes a smush of something on a website. So, um, yeah, 
those considerations kind of having it stacked and then side by side that's something that i think is quite important and i think it i think it's fine doing that you know i think it's fine to have one logo design but just two variations where you kind of you have it stacked on top of each other and then you kind of bring them side by side it's just you know it's the same design but it's just it ha it's that flexibility or if you can come up with a design that kind of ticks both boxes. So let's say we've got a logo and we've got this really cool, yeah, boom, brilliant. Nope, you can't see anything. Let's add some color there. There you go, there's a fantastic logo design. You know, that's kind of ideal because that will work on a website, it will work on a brochure, whatever, it will work pretty much everywhere. Maybe not so much the, the favicon, but we don't care about that. And I think we can all agree that this is the best logo design ever. <laughs> Are you British? Absolutely. You'd better believe it, sir. Good morning, Elizabeth, welcome. What about adding textures and depth to graphics in Illustrator? That is a good question. If we've got some time later, I will try and grab some textures. And perhaps we could do that. Your video about the infinity symbol was funny. I remember the video. I can't remember what was funny about it. Probably just my face, to be honest. <laughs> right, let's get a v let's get rid of these world class logos. I know they're they're pretty pretty spectacular, but uh... do you plan to remake the Dansky five logo five minute series? <laughs> uh, that video performed awfully, actually. Um, it's a shame, really. That video and even my latest video. Um, you know, if, you, if you've seen my latest video, uh, it's performed terribly, which is a real shame. But um, there's a lot of things that I learned just by going through that process of making that video that I think I can bring back to make the regular tutorials much more exciting and interesting and still kind of teach. Yeah, that latest video was kind of more, uh, it was more about me creating some cool designs, but also it was a bit more entertainment. It was less kind of you know, step-by-step -step educational. How to fit the artwork to the workspace without changing the resolution of this later? Uh, how to fit the artwork to the workspace without changing the resolution? Uh, do you mean... I think I understand what you mean. Do you mean kind of scaling it up? So, oops, let me grab this arrow here. So if I try and fit this to an artboard, you can see I have to, it kind of, it maintains the same properties and distorts out of shape. Whereas if you check these two boxes here, everything will just scale up. Hang on. Oh, that's interesting. That's very weird. That's got to be a bug. Yeah, you can see, look, from there to there, it scales up and maintains exactly the same proportions. But when I go past a certain point, it actually distorts. That's weird. I've never seen that before. That's got to be a bug. But yeah, normally... <laughs> Normally, it would maintain those. Uh, if I do it like this, I'll do this. There we go. Rounded rectangle. Let's thicken that up. Let's see if it does it on this as well, actually. Yeah, so with those boxes checked, you can see it actually will maintain those proportions. So you can just use that to blow up your art artwork to fit the artboard. Or you can uncheck these and it will maintain that corner radius, regardless of how you change the shape. Hopefully, I understood that correctly. I find that curves are really tricky when making small logos for the web, so many client logos look terrible when used as app icons. Hmm. Yeah, that logo is tight. <laughs> First live for me, Baptist Mascaro. Welcome. It's good to have you here. Mitsubitsu says, do you enjoy doing any studio-based art? 
what do you mean by studio based art? <laughs> Mike says, "What? That video is fantastic. I know. I I loved it. It's one of the my my most favorite favoritest videos that I've ever made actually. I enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed making it. Um yeah, I liked adding a bit of humor to it. Um yeah, but YouTube was just like nope <laughs> apparently. So, you know, which is a shame. But uh we'll see. Maybe it'll pick up. Who knows? Who knows? Right. Let's do some more arrows. We could actually use the pencil tool as well. Let's make sure the smoothing is at the maximum. Yeah, so here I'm kind of trying to pencil tool a nice curve, but it's just not really happening. So the curvature tool will come in real handy for this because I can get a nice curve there. No stress. And actually, let's just... Let's get a nice arrow there. There we go. That's really easy. And again, what I'm going to do is just because it's a path, I can change the cap, change the corner as well. It rounds it off a little bit. Let's try and space this equally. So I kind of trying to make this balanced. I don't want this to be like this because the end of the arrow then looks all wonky. So I try and keep the spacing consistent and then we'll do another version where it's kind of connected, touching like that. And that's a really great way to just get those kind of those, you know, those perfect curves. I want to say perfect curves. Dansky, please walk me through on how to distribute a shape around a path automatically. A shape around a path. Okay, there's, <laughs> there's a few ways to answer that. Okay. Let's, um, what's the best way to do this? If you haven't seen, I'm going to try and demo this, but if you haven't seen the video I made on this, you're you're about to have your mind blown with this technique. Just, <laughs> just a heads up. So I'm just going to quickly make a little, a little banner of sorts. We'll do this really quick. Do do do. There we go. Lovely. Flip it round. Send it back. Right. Okay. There's so many different tools and techniques in Illustrator. I've just sometimes got to check I remember them correctly. Okay. So, uh, first of all, who's seen the pencil video on my channel? The, the video with the pencils as the thumbnails. That's what I'm going to demonstrate now, just without pencils. We're going to be using a banner instead, but it's the same technique. Uh, oh, studio arts is in painting, drawing, collage. Oh, I, I don't really do any of that to be honest. I'm always kind of digital. Um, I've always, I've never been interested in art in this sort of painting sense. You know, the kind of traditional using traditional mediums. It's always been computers and digital that's kind of drawn me kind of more, even at, from a young age. I really enjoyed the latest video. It was funny, and you quickly demonstrate what can be done in these programs. And of course, they turned out amazing. Oh, thank you. That's the archaic way. Yeah, YouTube was like, nah, YouTube didn't didn't want to recommend it. <laughs> do, do, do. Right. Okay. So I've created this banner. Now if I wanted to let's group it together. Uh, if I wanted to like adjust this or kind of have this banner on a curve or a path or something. 
yeah, I could go and edit this one or I could create it again in a different way, but you have to keep recreating the banner. You've got to recreate these little kind of, these little sort of spits on the side. Um, and that just ultimately takes a lot of time. Instead, drag it into the brushes panel, select art brush. And what we can do is actually stretch this to fit the length of the stroke. Actually, no, we don't want that one. We want this one, stretch between guides. And this is really cool, actually. So what we want to do is bring this start point in and then bring the end point in as well. So basically everything here on the left and everything here on the right, that is not going to be stretched or distorted. It will maintain those proportions. Now for this to work correctly, everything in this middle part, that is going to be stretched depending on how long your path is. So just make sure that you're happy for it to be stretched. Because I'm using a solid color here or solid red or whatever, you could stretch that to infinity and beyond. And oh, all right, Buzz Lightyear, calm down. You could stretch that as much as you like and it wouldn't distort, it wouldn't pixelate, it wouldn't look stretched. That's what I'm trying to say. So uh, let's go ahead and click OK. You can see that gets added as a brush. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen the, uh, <laughs> the video with the pencils. Mr. D, maybe it wasn't so popular because you upset the Tasmanian. Well, that could be it, John. Yeah, that could be it. <laughs> Every time you say perfect curve, I'm reminded of the UK sitcom 2012 with a terrible marketing agency called Perfect Curve. Hmm. Okay, so I've got the brush tool selected. I've got this new art brush selected. And what I can do is I can click and hold shift no, hold shift and click, there we go. Draw a straight line. And I can actually draw that shape. But it gets better, you can actually do this as well. So I can now draw banners everywhere. There we go, banners for everyone. <laughs> So hopefully that answers your question about drawing or like adding an object to a path because what you do is define the object as an art brush and then you can add it to the path as a brush if that makes sense. But yeah, this is this is this is so much better because like, you know, if you want a perfect curve one, you can Oh, I said it again. Perfect curve. Damn it. You just do that. You just create that perfect quarter segment like we did before. You apply the brush, you rotate it. And now you've got that. In fact, it actually gets better. If you think that is good, right? Watch this. You can actually increase or decrease the stroke weight as well. So all this is still fully editable. Now just think how long it would take you to go and have to recreate this again and again and again. Make a curved one, a straight one, a thick one, a fat one. Now we can just do it all using these tools. And that's that's what I love about um, learning the tools in Illustrator, and why I kind of why I do champion that quite a lot, and I put a lot of focus on that in my course. Is that uh, you know the more tools you know, the more likely you are to be able to figure out the best tool for the job when it comes to solving a problem. So you know, someone says, "How do you do? How do, how do you do X?" And I'm thinking, okay, right, what tools have we got? Okay, we're gonna use this tool to solve that problem. And I know that I'm gonna use the right tool, like Mike was saying earlier, um, about you know learning things and doing it the wrong way and that kind of thing. You know, If you know the right tool, the best tool for the job, you're gonna be able to do it in a way that's quicker. But also, as you can see here, you know, it gives you much more flexibility. I mean, how many hours would this save you if you had to have like a design with banners on it? You know, or you could just create this set, a whole set of banners now as brushes, and then just save that file. And if you ever need a banner graphic, it's just like, boom, there you go. And it's fully editable. Oh, right, I'm gonna calm down now. I get a bit excited sometimes. <laughs> but you know, you know that already. I mean, it's a bit sad, I love digital art, finishing university right now, and all my other friends are extremely talented in the arts. And then there is me barely drawing a stick figure, lol. Hey, I'm terrible at drawing. You <laughs> you were there when I made the dove, so you've seen my drawing ability, right? 
in Illustrator. It ain't any better with paper and pencil. So don't worry about it. Maybe maybe you're just meant to be a, a digital bean as well. <laughs> I used to draw when I was younger, um, but as soon as I got on the computer, like Windows 3.11 or whatever it was, whatever came before 95, like I was just, I was hooked. I was just on the computer designing my own Tamagotchi pets in uh, Microsoft Paint. That was where it all began. But I did used to draw before that. Reese says, you're not alone, but I used to draw in grade school, but now I'm all digital and can't legit draw on my iPad or paper well anymore. What's paper? <laughs> People still use that. <laughs> the archaic way, I have the opposite problem. Everyone around me loves, dig loves digital and I'm here pulling out brushes and palettes. Good. I think it's probably good to actually do a bit of both because otherwise you can end up looking at screens all the time. So... Uh, you know, it's uh, it's good to get away from the old screens sometimes. What is the Mac you're using right now? Do you recommend the MacBook Air 23 for design? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've not used the MacBook Air, but right now I'm using a um, right this second, which is what I use for kind of all my um, uh, live streams, YouTube videos, that kind of thing. I'm using the M1 Mac Mini. That's the 2020 version. Um, pretty much the base model, uh, slightly bigger hard drive. And it's great. It's brilliant. And the new MacBook Air that they've launched is now M2 or whatever it is. It's got a higher spec. And this is just fine for design. So if the M1 is fine for design from three years ago, I'm going to assume that the M2 MacBook Air is just great <laughs> to be honest with you this makes me want to make a bunch of monster arms with a brush and use that for different motions yeah you could do you can make anything <laughs> the dove oh yes the dove the dove that I, I can't believe how long it took me to draw those wings so terrible got there in the end though I'm currently just doing whatever I feel like at the moment. As I'm watching this, I'm painting dwarves. <laughs> painting dwarves, that is, that's random. I've recently seen the 1973 Hobbit and love the animation. Oh, cool. I still sketch just to get out of my digital world. It's really soothing, says Alok. Absolutely. Yeah, I need to do that more, to be honest. That's a really good point. I should, I should do that more. Go and sit in the field with just a pad and some uh, some pens. Have you tried the Affinity apps, Dan? They're on offer for 75 plus VAT at the moment. Yeah, I have tried them a little bit. Um, I think it's a difficult one because a lot of... I know that Illustrator and a lot of the Adobe apps are kind of the industry standard and a lot of my audience, they kind of know me as the... I think I'm like the Adobe guy at this point. You know, I just... I've made an entire career and channel around their tools. But using um what was it i used uh i was playing around with a trial of affinity designer like version two that they launched a little while ago it is brilliant it is really really good the ui is good and makes sense the price like as you said like i'm sorry but that is that is very very competitive you can get uh, i think one app is like you know um that might be for all of them. Yeah, one app is like a price, but then you can get all three apps forever as a one-off purchase for just a little bit more. That's that's really competitive. So the only reason that I wouldn't switch to Affinity right now is just because of what I do with YouTube. And I, I've just spent so long learning Photoshop and Illustrator that uh, I, you know, the, these apps can do everything I would ever need them to do. Um, but some of the things in, in Affinity, they are definitely done better than Photoshop and Illustrator. There's just some tools that I can't think of any off the top of my head, but the way they're designed, they're much more intuitive and like there's some effects and things that like brushes, some effects that you can edit in real time as well. Whereas in Illustrator, you kind of have to, you know, load up a window or something. It's just, you know, there's a... I think Illustrator's got more features than Affinity Designer, but 
Yeah, there are definitely some features in Affinity Designer that I think the Illustrator team could look at and go, yeah, we could we could implement this because it's just, it's done really well. At one point I got so used to Procreate that I was two finger tap on a paper instead of using an eraser in the hope that it would undo that pencil stroke I made. <laughs> That's the only downside with pencil and paper as well. You've got no undo or save button, so... Uh... I want to practice this after the live. Dansky, can you give me these letter, these letters logo suggestions? <laughs> Maybe we'll do a logo in a bit. Maybe. Hi, usually lurking while working. Since I discovered your channel a couple of months ago, I really enjoyed your vids and streams, even the Ferrari squirrel last time. <laughs> oh, were you the one that said it looked like a squirrel? <laughs> that was funny. I like that. <laughs> yep, <Yeah>, okay. <laughs> I'm not seeing it personally. Like, I saw a horse, but uh, hey, if uh, if it looked like a squirrel to you, that's that's cool man <laughs> I've recently taken up drawing and painting to spend time with my daughter and get away from screens for a bit that's fantastic oh yeah that's and that's that's nice as well to find something you can do together sometimes I have my son uh, he's seven years old and he comes into the studio and I'll get him doing some like 3d in Adobe dimension and so he's able to use Adobe dimension now to do 3d on his own and um, he he loves it he like play he plays minecraft at home and he loves being able to come in and use like the cubes and the spheres in dimension to then make the Minecraft characters and things. So yeah, it's nice. There is a great benefit to not having an undo. You really get good at fixing mistakes and learning to roll with the punches. Ah, <laughs> that's very true. Yeah, I think it can be quite easy to get dependent on uh, on the software. Anyway, back to arrows. Right, let's let's get a few more ideas. Ooh, that'd be a good one. So another way we could do some cool arrows is we could make an ellipse. There we go. We'll make a cut there. And just delete that segment. And then we can grab this. and pop it there and I might make this one a bit smaller actually now the trick with these and getting this on the end is you kind of want to try and match the angle a little bit to where this part of the stroke goes into the arrowhead yeah something like that and you could call you could of course rotate this around so this is quite a useful one to to create because you could have it then wrap around something. And if we scale that down, we can get we could try a slightly thicker version. Mm. No, I quite like the original. That's cool. <clears throat> All right, there we go. Hi Dansky, I'm new in this channel. Welcome. If something is missing, the orange glass. <laughs> the orange glass, uh, it's somewhere. It has definitely gone somewhere else. Probably, It's probably in the kitchen, to be honest. Uh, hey, I have a question. I was watching your videos from 2015-16. And I see that your look and your talk have changed a lot since then. How old are you and when did you get married? Uh, I'm not married and I'm 36. Not married yet, anyway. Hmm. But uh, I am 36. I thought I was 37 the other day and um, yeah, I totally forgot how old I was. Yeah, let's try this. 
and just show you another little trick. This is a very handy one actually. So if we create black at one end, and we'll go with, well, we could pick white. You can't really see it now, but if I select both of these and go blend and make, you can see it does that. However, if I go back to the blend options and choose specified steps, we'll start at one. I can actually slowly increase this. And as you can see, this is a great way to just lay out a nice kind of palette of shading from one color to another. So let's make one end red, one end yellow, and then I can go and expand this, ungroup it. And I've now got like all of these different colors that graduate from red to yellow. And I could go and add these as swatches. Can I add them all if I drag them in? No, it adds them as one one big. Huh, how do I do, 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 new color group. Convert process to global. I do love a good global swatch. Ah, create from selected swatches. There we go. <laughs> and it doesn't add anything. That's that's just fantastic. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Add selected colors. There we go. Fantastic. Right, now I can... Oops. There we go. Now I guess we can drag them. It's kind of weird why it gave me the chance to make a group from the selected colors but didn't actually add them. But anyway, there we go. That's a really good tip if you want to just kind of create... I know you've got some like default gray ones here, but if you want to do, to do this for other colors, that's a really quick way to kind of just get that in there as a, a global swatch. And then as you can see, they're all global swatches. So as soon as I start changing the swatch, it will update every instance throughout the document. So that is a, a pretty nifty trick. Right, let's do a few more arrows. Let's do, I think we're gonna do this one with a kink now. So we'll kind of draw a straight line. I'm gonna drag out a curve here, drag out another curve. Remember, press F to kind of um, flip that round. And then we'll continue that straight line again. Now this is all kind of individual pieces. So we need to select those points and then join the paths. And then I'm gonna pop this arrowhead no, I'm not. I want to need it symmetrical. So let's just make one of these. There we go. And pop that on top. Ah, oh, there we go. That looks lovely. So we've got a nice thin arrow there. I'm going to try a chunky version as well. Let's chunk this up. Not like that. That's awful. <laughs> Oh, we could. I suppose we could close the gap there on the bottom. And this is the great thing about the scale tool as well. You've got this over here, which is S. You can actually select individual anchor points. So I'm just going to select these two and you can scale them holding shift out either side. So you shouldn't ever have to scale in one side and then scale in the other side. One, that just wastes time. And two, uh, you're going to invariably get inconsistencies on either side. And if you've ever joined the Tuesday uh, design review streams, you'll know I'm a stickler for those details. We've got to keep our details like super tight. Right, let's... Uh, I think I'm going to make this one squared off like that. And then what we can do is move this over. This would look quite cool on an angle, actually. And because it's at a 45 degree angle, if I wanted to extend this, I can just hold shift and you can see that or Illustrator does something rather weird. But we'll ignore that. And I can maintain that same angle. 
So we could have one arrow there. We could do another one down here. And pick one of these lovely swatches. Oof, that is a nice color. Ooh, oh, that is a beautiful color, actually. Ooh, I like that. And doing stuff like this is a really good exercise in um, in creativity as well, actually. Just kind of sit down and see how many of a thing can you create in different styles. So I'm just going to keep making arrows um, and just see. Yeah, it kind of flexes your creative muscles, so to speak, you know. The details, bro, the details. How are any of us, really? How are we indeed? <laughs> if resizing the entire selection, what is the difference when using the bounding box to resize versus using the scale tool? Good question. So when using the main selection tool, um, this is just a very quick and easy way of doing everything. You know, I can use this tool to resize and adjust the scale. I can distort it as well. But using this tool, I can also rotate and I can move. So basically, the, the selection tool is good for moving, scaling and rotating. You can do it all from there. And that is fine. It's great if you're doing it in a pinch. The difference with the scale tool, and that's I think the same as the rotate tool as well. So you can see them kind of up here is these tools you can double click them and you get options related to rotation and scale so you can choose exactly what you want to scale and there's a few settings here these may look familiar because we used them earlier um, but also let's say the scale tool for example yes I can I can scale like this but as I mentioned I can also scale anchor points so I can select these two on the right with the direct selection tool, just that right hand side, and I can then scale that. Whereas I wouldn't be able to do that with the main selection tool. So if I then drag a copy of this up, select the bottom two, scale that in, top two, scale it out, duplicate it up. And the way I'm doing this so quickly is I'm using those keyboard shortcuts. So A is the direct selection tool, select, and then S for the scale tool, and do the thing. A, select, S, scale, A, select, S, scale. And I'm a bit of a keyboard shortcut bandit. I just, I love my keyboard shortcuts. So, you know, sometimes I'll just, sometimes I will rotate by going to the corner and I'll rotate. Sometimes it's just a bit fiddly, kind of looking for that corner arrow in the corner for the rotation. So I'll just press R and rotate it. So I can move it here, I can scale it with S, I can rotate it with R. That's why I use keyboard shortcuts, because it just makes everything super, super quick. Um, also, with something like R, let's go back to that actually, and let's get a normal shape, right? Let's get a circle. With R, you know, obviously I'm going to rotate this. Actually, circle's a bad idea. Let's get a star instead. There we go. So if I rotate this star, it rotates around that central point, right? If I press return, um, I get a few options. Again, I can adjust the rotation. But if I hold down Alt or Option and then click, you can see what it does is it actually sets a new point of rotation. And so I can rotate this around that point. And let's, I could click OK and it would rotate that shape to this position that you see here. Or I could create a copy and then press Command or Control D and it will repeat that last action. So it's going to rotate around that point that I set there and then you can repeat the action and rotate it around again and again and again. And I seem to have just created some kind of weird uh, emblem thing out of stars, which is uh, <laughs> interesting. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but uh, yeah. So that's why you would use the rotate tool and the scale tool or the uh, the shear tool or a whole bunch of other tools is because 
you know, the main selection tool is great for the basics, moving, scaling, rotating. But if you want that extra functionality, the individual tools would, um, would allow you to do that. Hello there, Skeezy. Welcome. Wondering why my chat are not showing here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing your messages. I don't know if you sent some others. The chat does sometimes go a bit funny on YouTube. Camo Ahmed, hi Dansky, I hope all is well. What is the return key? Sorry, it's I never know what to call this. It's return or enter. So you know when you kind of just type and then you press the return key or the enter key to go to the next line? That's the return key. Maybe I should call it the enter key. I don't know. <laughs> Looks like the foundation of a flag. Yeah, it does look like something, doesn't it? Go on then. Let's make it into a let's make it into a flag. What color should we have? Should we someone shout out a color? In fact, shout out two colors, and we'll make this into a flag. <laughs> we'll just we'll make up our own country. You made a snowflake, yeah. Uh, oh, I suppose yeah, it could be kind of a snowflake, couldn't it? <laughs> Actually, green and yellow. Oh, interesting. Okay. Green and yellow. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So, uh, yeah. We've got a flag. We could go up here to object and we could actually make that a bit more like a flag. Uh, no, let's go to effect actually. Warp and then we've got flag. Yeah, I think about 20% there. You can actually distort this like whoa and uh, make it into like a different shape flag if you like. Kind of like you'd see at the top of, um, I don't know what they're called, the golf poles. You know when you kind of have the, the pole for the hole with the flag on it. I, I'm clearly not a golf person, but you get those kind of pointed flags. You could do that. Or we could just have a standard country flag. There we go. There we go. Lovely. <laughs> In fact, I wonder... Let's, where's the appearance panel? Yeah, let's hide that effect a second. I have an idea. So we could go in here. And let's grab this color. We'll keep that color. But I'm going to add a gradient. And RGB. We'll pop that in there. And we'll pop this at the other end and then what I'm going to do is add a slightly darker version of this so change over to HSB that is hue saturation and brightness bring the brightness down and then add another light one add a dark one something like this this might not work <laughs> and let's turn that warp back on No, I think there's probably a better way to do this. I was going to try and um, use this to sort of... Oh, maybe this could work. Let's have a play. I was going to use this to like add some shadows at certain points. Yeah, I've definitely done this a better way before. But this is one way that you can use gradients to add shadows. This probably just isn't the it's probably just not the best example. Eh, I don't know. Oh, it's it's okay. I mean, it could be a lot worse. You could also use the mesh tool, which would look really good. But there was another way I did it, and I can't remember. 
exactly what it is but that's a quick and easy way that you could use a you know you could use gradients to kind of create some kind of shadows there we go we've got our we've got our own little flag there <laughs> Since we have a Tansky flag, what should be the name of the new country? I don't know. We've got we've got our flag. Let's give this country a Lansky. <laughs> Dansky land. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on, I don't I don't think it needs to be called Dansky land. We can have a name that 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 represents all of us. Unless this is my country and I will be your overlord. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be funny actually no, that'd be, that'd be terrible <laughs> Lansky Dank <laughs> Dansky style <laughs> oh, that's so good I love it Jeff <laughs> Dansky Republic Fansky land Oh, that's funny. Right. Arrows. I mean, we could actually do something something slightly unrelated, but just while we've got a bunch of arrows here. I don't know if this will... Not sure why, why I did that. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that is or why I did it. I got to be honest. Um, I'm just going to put that to one side. That that could go on the flag. Maybe. Kind of feels quite sort of uh, tribal, I guess. Don't know. Right, I need some more ideas for arrows. Ooh, brushes. We've not done brushes yet. I've just realized that, actually. So let's go back and add our brush. And you can actually open up some artistic brushes from the built-in brush library as well. So uh, I've selected calligraphy brushes here, but, I mean, we could... We could apply one of those, it will look a bit rubbish, but you can actually scroll through here at the bottom and there's all these brushes built into Illustrator. As you can see, this is a very quick and easy way to add kind of like a a grungy kind of textured brush. So if you wanted something like a little bit more rough around the edges, more hand drawn, this is all still vector by the way, so you can scale this to any size. But this is a really good way to kind of do that. So something like that, for example. It looks pretty cool. And you can adjust the stroke weight as well. And it will just thicken up or make thinner those brushes too. Let's try another one. And you can download, you can install like um, your own brushes as well. So if you go to Open Brush Library and Other Library, you can download Vector Brush Libraries. So if you've got uh, a subscription to Envato Elements, which I use all the time, um, you can download loads of vector brushes for Illustrator there and then just load them in and apply these brushes to any path. I mean, we've got like spatter brushes here. And uh, these are, some of these are pretty, uh, pretty wild and wonderful. Let's make that a bit smaller. Yeah, we've got stripey ones, we've got watercolor. Oh, that's interesting. Like, huh? Like dotted. Weird patterns. Yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of these. Um, oh my goodness! What is this? Cube brushes. Oh, stars. There we go. That's cute. I like that. Actually, no, I don't. It looks rubbish. But 
We've got these uh, elegant curl and floral sets as well. Ooh, grunge brushes, nice. I think these might be some custom ones that I installed. I love that first one. That's cool, I like that. That is really good. And what's this one, hand drawn? Oh, nice. It's very squiggly. <laughs> That's cool. So yeah, brushes, as you can see, they're a lot of fun to play around with and you can, if you don't want a really clean look, you can kind of get that more hand-drawn, grungy kind of texture quite easily. The United States of Dansky. Oh my goodness, you're still going. <laughs> That's perfect for the flag. All right, Hail, Hail Hydra. Yeah, it's a little bit like that, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of looks like the sort of logo you would see on a flag if we were the bad guys, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, it's fine. Let's, let's get that on there. Right, of course. Now I'm scaling it down. It's maintaining those stroke properties. So let's make sure we're scaling everything down. And because I've gone inside that object and it's got like a, a warp on it. Oops. What have I... Oh no, what have I done? What on earth have I done? Oh jeez, what has happened here? Come on, Dan, you lemon. Sometimes I do this. You double click to go inside a group and then it just... Oh, I just get lost. Right, I'm just going to undo it. I'll jump out, boom, grab it. Give it a bit of shrinky dinky down. There we go. Centralize it, group it, and let's just go and apply that flag again. There we go. Ha! There we go. There is our uh, our flag, which does definitely look quite sinister. <laughs> grunge arrows, exactly, exactly, Quinton. I love a bit of grunge. I want the same patterns and symbols as you. Uh, I don't have it. Yeah, I think I've got a few custom ones installed, but most of them, especially the colorful ones, they should come with Illustrator as standard. I think it's the grungy ones at the end. I think there's some custom ones I've downloaded. Is there any effect like on AI like Liquify? Yes, uh, Photoshop's Liquify, there is one. Um, let's go and add a lovely yellow circle. And under the width tool, click and hold, you've got warp. And uh, left and right square brackets uh, do nothing, apparently. But we can double click on this tool and make the brush bigger. I, I don't know why. That should adjust the brush. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, hold up, hold up. Yeah, so you double click on the warp tool. Brush size may be interactively changed by holding down the option key. I mean, it should change the same as the brush tool with the left and right square brackets. If we're going to have brushes, they should all change size the same way. They just, that's, they, they should do. So, yeah, as you can see, I'm holding down alter option and it will skew the brush shape. If I hold down shift as well, it changes the brush size. So, uh, and this enables me to kind of warp the shapes around. So it is kind of like your liquify. And as you can see here, it's not especially strong. So I need to bump up the intensity. Let's go for 75%. And I can, as you can see, smush this quite a lot more. Don't ask me what this is. I have, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> hey guys, I'm a designer. <laughs> oh, how did I get this far? <laughs> Medusa flag. Yes, Roger, that is exactly what it's like what it's like. 
That's funny. It's quarter past five here. Gotta go and hang with the family. Have fun, everyone. Amazing. Thank you so much, Quinton. Have a good evening and thanks for joining the stream. Hopefully see you in the next one. Hasnane says, hey man, just wanted to let you know that I used to watch your videos when I was first learning Illustrator. I have a small little graphic design business now. Thank you for the educational content. That's amazing. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, I'm glad the videos were helpful. Ha, that was so good. I, lo I love it when um, I hear things like that. It's so nice to kind of hear that all the videos and everything, all the time that goes into making them is actually helping people. And I, I, I learned a lot from watching tutorials years ago. This is like pre-YouTube. This is back when tutorials were written articles back in the day. And uh, so I learned a lot from the internet. And I still do. I still watch tutorials now and I still learn now. And it's nice being able to kind of be a part of that educational ecosystem and kind of put something back out into the world to help other people the same way that I learned as well. It's nice. I like how you put the layers window to the left. Yeah, that's something I've I've done recently. I did it for the last video because if I keep the layers window on the left, it meant I can put myself down here on camera, kind of like where I am now, and I don't cover up anything. if this would let's do another art brush so we'll grab this brush here I do love that orange color uh, there we are drag you in there art brush Stretch to fit the length. Right, let's see what that does. If I. Yeah, so you can see if I have that middle option selected, if you want it to stretch the entire brush, it will stretch the end as well, the arrow head. But if you don't want that, you can double click it and have stretch between guides. And then I'm just going to just have that section there stretched. And now I can use this to draw anywhere so if you want to get really creative and draw arrows and have this is you know you can kind of define it as a brush uh, oh you could do something like that oh no how's it go that's terrible <laughs> but yeah super quick way to just draw loads of arrows so if you need lots of arrows and you want to draw this freehand or maybe you've got like a, a graphics tablet and you can draw much much better curves a lot easier than this this is this is the more efficient way to do it it's just make it as a brush and then just draw arrows everywhere Dansky what's your name Dan <laughs> Daniel that is my name Daniel Dan so yeah, feel free to call me Dan. That is what my friends call me. Or Dansky is fine as well. Eagle for inspiration. I've never heard of Eagle before. Do double arrows. Yeah, so you could do a... Uh, that would be a good one. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, then. Let's do a double arrow. Go on, then. Let's see. Uh... And we can expand these, you know, you can expand that brush and then you do get the individual pieces. So let's go and throw another one on the, as soon as you, as soon as I read that double arrow, I just thought double rainbow then. <laughs> so that stretch there, bring it in, bring it in. Oh, I love this technique. This is just so good. Double arrow. Okay, right. We've done it. Now let's try it out. 
That's rubbish, Dan. Okay. Huh. We can just draw arrows everywhere, holding shift. So as you can see, uh, this tool does provide a lot of flexibility. Oh, that's cool. I like that one. <laughs> and I'm doing this all freehand, but of course, you know, if you were doing it with more precision and drawing those paths properly, <laughs> then, uh, you know, you can apply the brush and do get that same kind of effect. Chip Pit from India, thank you for joining. Lots of love back to you. Double arrow with the curved ones will look amazing. Oh, these ones here. Yeah, let's try that. All right, let's let's do another double arrow. Come on then. Let's do it. And I think that's the thing. Once you've got like a few different styles, you can really just define them as brushes and then use those styles that you define to actually just generate lots of different brush shapes. So you define the brush and you could do a rounded one, a straight one, a diagonal one, Right, let's give this a go. Nope, wrong brush. Ha, <laughs> that's cool. Oh yeah, that's a really good one. And this is great. If you're doing diagrams, remember you can hold shift as well and just draw it in straight lines. But yeah, if you've got diagrams and you need to kind of add these sort of freehand annotations, This is probably the best way to do it. And the best thing is if you add like, let's say you have a design with 20 arrows that you've added like this. If you wanted to change it, you could go and edit the arrow and go, oh, okay, I'll make some changes, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we'll change that there. Change the brush and you can actually apply that to all of the strokes that already use this brush style. And it will update all your brushes with those changes. So that's a pretty nifty way of doing it. No one says, hey, Mr. White, hello. The ribbon that you made is good. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys, I have to go. Need to wake up early tomorrow. Thanks, Dansky, for the great live videos. I really enjoyed it. Amazing. Kimo Ahmed, thank you so much for joining. And hopefully I will see you again. In fact, it is, uh, it's half four now. So I'm going to have to go to soon too because... I need to eat some food and plan some YouTube videos and do all sorts of things. Is there anything anyone wants me to kind of demonstrate before I jump off? Um, I, we've made lots of arrows today and a flag, which has been a lot of fun. But um, yeah, if there's any techniques you'd like to see, um, just you know, shout them out in the chat and I'll do my best to, to demo them. Ryzen says, love from India. Amazing, thank you. I'll do, do a little heart. There we go. <laughs> Love back to you. Thank you for joining. What Mac MacBook are you working on right now? So this one that I use for kind of streaming uh, video content is the M1 Mac Mini. What I use on the go all the time for my design work and editing and pretty much everything is a 2018 MacBook Pro. So I haven't upgraded. I haven't got a new one or anything yet because the 2018 one is doing just fine. It still serves me very well. Oh, good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I love doing these. <laughs> How do I start my journey as a graphic designer? Says Chit Pit. That is... Whoa. That is a, that is a loaded question. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of different ways you can start your journey as a designer. I think... I mean, of course, it depends on your circumstances. The first thing I would recommend doing is picking some software and learning it. If you're going to learn any software for graphic design, learn Illustrator. 
Um, Photoshop's great, but Illustrator is much better for doing so many things. Logos, icons, graphic design, packaging, business cards, stationery, posters, flyers, brochures, whatever you want to do, Illustrator does pretty much all of it. And it's got it's got a lot of tools that are great for creation as well. Shape tools, as you can see, you know, as you can see here, you know, you can adjust paths and all sorts of different things. So Illustrator would be the one to learn. Um, then I'd probably try and grab yourself a course uh, and try and learn Illustrator as quick as possible and practice and just have a go at creating things, practice things, you know, set yourself fictional briefs, um, follow designers in their work, get inspiration from them and just, just make things, just make things in Illustrator, learn the tools and uh, I think I think that would be the first thing to do before kind of looking for work. I think learn learn a, a tool and kind of get comfortable with it and learn to make some stuff. And then it, you know once you, once you get your first job, it's a lot easier because you get a lot of experience every day by going into work and designing stuff. And once you've got your first job, it makes it easier to get your second job and then your third job and so on. So. It's like a lot of things. Once It's hard to get your foot in the door, but once you do get in there and you get that first job, it makes it much easier to kind of springboard to your next job, you know? Tome says, ever work on some font symbol-based patterns? Font or symbol-based? You know, I don't do a lot of patterns, actually. It's, no, it's just not something that I do. I've done a few, but... No, I don't really do a lot of patterns, actually. I'm being completely honest. Can you make one of the arrows look 3D? That is a great question. Yes, we can definitely do that. Right, let's grab this chunky, chunky arrow here. Oops. There we go. Let's go and have a play with... I mean, the easiest way to make this 3D is to just go and use Illustrator's new 3d tools that's kind of like the quick win for 3d it has its limitations but as you can see it very quickly creates a good 3d looking arrow so if you're doing like if you're making your own graphs or something in illustrator these 3d tools are amazing because you can take a 2d graph with all that data and make it look 3d and it does all the lighting we can add like a round bevel on it let's go for 20 and 20 nope that's that's two let's go for 20 20 and you just get like a nice soft bevel. Can you see that there? A nice soft bevel on the edges, so it kind of rounds it off ever so slightly. You could do an inflated arrow, but that looks a bit rubbish. Um, we can bevel both sides as well. Freely rotate the arrow around. And this isn't even using ray tracing, and it looks good already. If I go up here and turn on ray tracing, it will render this with realistic lighting as well. And then I could even go over to the lighting and I could then change the direction of the lighting. So, uh, ooh, that is nice. Ooh, that's horrible. <laughs> so we're gonna go with top left, I think. Yeah, so that's a great way that you can make um, 2D graphics into 3D graphics very quickly and easily. And you kind of get like a more realistic look with the lighting as well. The 3D tools do have their limitations in that if you can't create it within those 3D tools, you are kind of stuck. You know, the limitation of 3D with this kind of technique is is those 3D features. But, you know, for a quick 3D, they are good for quite a lot of things. And text as well. If you've got some text, you can make some pretty, pretty badass looking 3D text as well. So yeah, there we go, 3D arrow. And the color and everything is still, um, yeah, still editable. So I can, oops, oh yeah. Because I turned on ray tracing, it takes ages to try and edit anything. So just be mindful of that. But I can still change the color and it will update. If I wanted it blue, but I don't. But yeah, the way I would do it with kind of 3D is, um, 
I would personally keep ray tracing off most of the time. I would use it if I wanted to render out the final work, but as you can see, making any changes with ray tracing it takes seconds to load, which can really add up. So I would just kind of keep it off unless you're working on something like lighting. Um, also, shadows, really quickly, before we finish, I know some people wanted to me to cover some shadow stuff. I need to make some space. Sorry, brush, uh, double-ended arrows, you're gonna have to move out of the way. Okay, so there's a few different ways you can do shadows. One is, well, let's just, let's select this and give it a solid fill. Add the default black to white gradient. From the gradient panel, we'll make it radial and then flip it round so the black is in the middle, going out to white. And let's add a solid background color behind. Of course, this is no good because there's white. So what I would personally do is set this color to black at the other end, but then drop that opacity down to zero. Now, of course, as you can see, uh, it's hard on the top and bottom edge, which is no good. So there's this value here, which is, I can't even remember what this is called, but if you bring it down, you can see you can adjust the height of the shadow. So it kind of depends what you want, really. Could go for something like this. And then you could stretch this around freely to kind of adjust the shape of the shadow. One of the things with this feature, you can see the edge is quite hard. It's not perfect. Um, I could try and eyedropper this to the same color as that. No, that doesn't really do anything. Um, so you're always going to get better photos in Photoshop, but you know you can definitely do shadows in Illustrator. Another technique for shadows is right. We'll make a black circle. Boom, and we'll make another circle. Um, what color? Well, let's just, we'll start with blue for now. <laughs> just so I'll show you how you can change it. And we'll select them like this, and I'll go and blend them together. And as you can see, it kind of has that gradual blend. And then let's go and select, yeah, you can do this as well. Let's double click to go inside. I'll select the blue circle and I'm going to make that black, but I'll set the opacity to zero. And then let's go up to blend, blend options, specified steps, and if I increase the number of steps, so you can see as I'm doing this, it's a pretty bad looking shadow unless you want something like this. I mean, it does look kind of cool, this effect actually. I mean, that looks pretty cool, actually. Do you know what? That could be, I might have to use that for something. That is a, that is a pretty cool effect. It's not a good shadow, but <laughs> I'm gonna put that to one side. That's kind of cool. Anyway, come on, Dan, focus. Back to the shadow, right. So back into the blend options. And then all you do is bump up the number of steps. Now, if you had like a bazillion steps, it will become more demanding on your computer. But, you know, 200 is fine, and you do get a, a pretty decent shadow. And you still sort of get that hard bit around the edge, which is kind of annoying. Uh, let's see if there's a way I can kind of... Another way you can do it is press G for the gradient tool, and we could try and maybe bring this, maybe bring that midpoint in a little bit. There we go. That makes it a little bit smoother around the edge less hard and then you can kind of resize the shadow like this so you know that will depend on your lighting so if I had a product say some packaging and the lighting is coming from above you might kind of have your shadow like this or if the lighting was coming from the left your shadow might extend out to the side like this and then you've got a shadow using the blend tool as well. So we could actually go back into this and once you've added a blend, you can double click to go inside and you can move those two objects around and the blend will update in real time. So if I go and move that larger shape all the way over here, you can see I've actually created a shadow kind of as if the light were being cast from the left. 
So let's say this is a product. I go and add this up here like this. You see what I've done there? So we do have a much darker shadow here and it does gradually fade out. Now something else actually is if you do get a shadow that is a little bit hard around the edges, and I've kind of I've mitigated that quite well. That looks quite soft there. You can actually just go and add a little bit of Gaussian blur. Obviously not too much, but as you can see it does become really soft. So if we if we make that really, really soft, this shadow could be quite useful if, let's say, if I wanted a levitating product or I had something floating. This can be quite a nice way to kind of simulate having something floating off the ground. Mike says, I believe you can export these as obj files yes you can any any 3d you make you can export that um, as an obj that's probably the best format to be honest the granddad of all gaussian blur yes indeed danny hello hello designers i have no idea what a supercell mac competition is <laughs> the only other way you can do shadows and this uh well, not the only, but I'm sure there's many ways to do shadows. But um, another way is to use the mesh tool. And so I've just added a point there. And if I zoom in, now this the success of this result does vary, but you can select these different points around the edge with the direct selection tool and adjust the opacity. So if I go and select all of these around the edge and set them to zero, you can see that is another way to create a shadow. And using the mesh tool, I can of course adjust this. I could push this over here, make the shadow a bit thinner there, thinner there. So you can kind of change the shadow. Um, I mean, again, the edge is quite hard on this one, so they all give you, as you can see, slightly different results. They're very similar, but again, we could just go and add a bit of a Gorgiano Blurro and actually, you know, it kind of does solve some of those issues. You know, obviously, if your shadow is close to the product, you don't want it to be too blurred, but if your edge is quite hard, just a, a bit of blur, maybe a few pixels is sometimes enough just to soften that hard edge so uh, yeah those are the kind of the the three or four way techniques that come to mind to do shadows off the top of my head so hopefully that's helpful when you complete one million subscribers can you open the box on the live stream oh that would be nice wouldn't it I, I'd, it would be fun to do something definitely a video or a stream or something kind of uh, with the old one million plaque <laughs> Always happy for this creative period of my morning. Just fun to spend time creatively, says Tome. Yeah, for sure. I love I love making things first thing in the morning now. I've started doing it recently and it's uh, it's amazing. Where are your 30 second to 10 minute logo design challenges? Really enjoyed the uploaded one. Yeah, we're definitely going to do some more competitions and challenges soon. I think we were talking about that on Tuesday, weren't we? About... Um, yeah, doing a competition or something because they're a lot of fun and um, it's, just, it's amazing to see what people create as well. So, uh, yeah, I do love it. <laughs> right, fantastic. That is going to wrap it up for me today because uh, I'm hungry and I'm going to go and get some food <laughs> or something. Maybe I'll eat an apple. So, um, what was I going to say? So yeah, design review on Tuesday next week as normal. Um, let me grab the link. If you'd like a chance for me to review your work on Tuesday, this is the link. So just upload your PSDs, your AI files, your JPEGs, PNGs, whatever it is. I've got quite a lot of submissions. So what I'm going to do is this will be the last time that I'm taking submissions um, probably for a couple of weeks. 
just because I've got so many people have submitted that I haven't got around to reviewing. So I'm gonna grab all of those ones that haven't been reviewed yet and bundle them up and we'll do those over two weeks. Um, just so I can catch up on the backlog of submissions, that will be really helpful. And then, uh, yeah, we'll open it up again for new submissions after that. But um, yeah, anyway, thank you for being fantastic as always. It's been an absolute pleasure designing arrows and uh, flags with you and doing shadows. I've had a great time. And um, yeah, have a fantastic week, weekend, and I'll see you on Tuesday.